Amen. Well, we welcome everybody, those that are online, certainly those that are here tonight to our first Bible study of the year. Uh, we got them excited about the topic, uh, the Bible series that we're about to, the Bible series that we're about to start. Take the volume down some, please. The, value, the uh, Bible study series we're about to start, we're calling it Joshua's um, Success Journey. Um, and I want to just go ahead and lift up a prayer tonight and um, ask God's um, blessings upon what we're doing tonight. Again, good to see by everybody. We are a lot of cold weather out there. And so uh, good to see you tonight uh, in the house of God um, where it is a little warm. Amen. Eternal Lord, our God, we thank you and praise you. We give you honor and glory for truly where we praise tonight, O oh God. Uh, this is the day that you've made. We shall rejoice. Uh, we're exceedingly glad in it tonight, O oh God. We thank you for this, this new year of uh, enrichment that you have prepared for us by way of uh, the word. We thank you for this uh, environment and platform of Bible study. Uh, for those who are looking to certainly uh, grow greater spiritually, which we all are, and we thank you tonight for the opportunity to come together in your name. Uh, we pray now, God, that you will bless our minds, uh, bless our hearts tonight, God, to receive uh, the word, to be enlightened in our minds. And uh, we're looking for an awesome year. And so we know that you have uh, great lessons and words prepared to get us uh, to the destination that you uh, have attended for us uh, by the end of this year. So we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Let's go to the book of Joshua tonight. Again, it's good to see everybody tonight. We're going to the book of Joshua um, tonight. Um, we got a new series we're starting that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's a series tonight that, that I believe, uh, as I've, I've been studying this chapter uh, for probably a couple of weeks now, and one thing I pick up, uh, they have strict uh, de definitive uh, parallels. They have parallels. Uh, the journey that Joshua took, and we'll give some understanding around that, the, the journey that he took uh, to come over to the promised land, to come over to a place uh, that God had prepared for them uh, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and 430 years in Egypt. Uh, they're coming over into the promised land, and um, I see it tonight that we as children of God, we're coming over into, not, I'm just not talking about a new year, uh, but we're certainly uh, have entered into a new season in 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 the in the um, in in humanity, and we are crossing over to the other side of eternity. But before we get there, there's a, some 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 journey. There's a journey that we have to take, and we're certainly expecting uh, God's supernatural move as we take this journey. So it certainly will be a journey of faith. It will be a journey of great victory and triumph. I believe that this year, especially starting this year, and we've seen great things happen last year, coming into this year, uh, just from a body of Christ, uh, I believe that we're going to be coming into some new things. I believe that new doors are going to be opened up, new opportunities are going to be presented. Uh, that we're going to see God magnified. He's going to be magnified through our particular lives. And uh, I want to start this, this journey tonight, and I'm going to look at the book of Joshua because it's a very unique book. It is a very unique book, and it's a book that sometimes that we go to and we, we find different lessons out of it, and, um, and it certainly inspires people, encourages people, and gives information. Uh, but, but I'm not sure how long the Lord is going to let us uh, remain in this book, but it's certainly um, we're going to remain in the time to really get the nuggets uh, out of here that it can impact our lives and that we can make adjustments if we meet, need to make adjustments uh, so that we too can come into uh, a place of fulfillment. The book of Joshua is about coming into a place of fulfillment. Uh, God has promises for all of us. There's different things that God has did, um, ordained for us. There's different promises that, are, that, are, that exist for all of our lives regardless of where we've been in life. And there's a place of fulfillment. There's a season of fulfillment. And so that's what we want to talk about tonight. So I'm going to give you a little, just a little, little something tonight, a little sermon on the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua tells of God's fulfillment of his promises. I love the fact that God's a faithful God, that if God said it, he will fulfill it. Uh, that the book of Joshua tells, tells of God's fulfillment of his promises. Um, 
that he made to their forefather Abraham. God promised that Abraham would become the father of a great nation, that he would receive a land, and he would bring blessings to, to the entire world. And we find that in the book of Genesis chapter 12. In addition to that, it is about the Israelites' entry into Canaan, which is the promised land. It's the land of milk and honey. It is the, one of the promises that God gave to Abraham uh, that his descendants, his children, their grandchildren, that they will be able to habitat this land. It will be a land that will be a reward uh, for struggles, for the struggle, and just the, the, uh, what, what, what Abraham meant to God. Uh, so in addition, it's about Israel's, or the Israelites' entry into Canaan after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Okay, so Exodus is about they, they was in captivity for 430 years. Um, as they came out of 430 years of captivity, they went into the wilderness. The Bible says they went in there to test them, uh, to prove them, but also to grow in relationship with them. And now they're, they're, they ex the Exodus has ended, the Exodus out of Egypt, which 40 years were part of the Exodus. Now they're getting into the promised land. Uh, it's led by Joshua because his successor Moses um, has died. And we'll pick that up in a minute because it starts out in Joshua 1 uh, talking about the death of Moses. Um, and it, and, and it's, it, in addition, it's about the Israelites conquering the Canaanites. Uh, those, are the, 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 those who inhabited Canaan, the promised land, the Canaanites. And then what happened, they re redistributed the, the land to the 12 tribes of Israel. The key verse we'll find is in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. If you will, go there tonight. Uh, and then we're going to go back to verse 1, so we'll start there. Amen? Appreciate y'all making this adjustment tonight. Um, um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. And I um, want you to understand this is just not a historical book, uh, but I believe it's a prophetic book. I believe it's a prophetic book that gives parallels, uh, gives us specific lessons uh, that is teaching us how to come into fulfillment as we cross over from one season or one place to another place. So when we're going through the book of Joshua, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about the things that, 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 that you believe God has in store for you. Uh, I want you to understand uh, the walk of faith. Um, I want you to understand that 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 different things about faith, but also one thing that I will highlight through this study, I want, want us to see the nature of God because you've got to understand who God is because when you understand who God is, it gives you a greater encouragement. It gives you a greater confidence in who your God is and what he's able to do. Um, starting at verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage. This is the word that's spoken to Joshua because he is the leader. He's the leader who's taken Israel uh, into Canaan, the promised land. God has already raised up another generation. This is a new generation of people. There's a new generation that is going to experience the fulfillment of God's promises. The old generation has died out. Uh, the old generation have proven uh, that they could not walk the walk of faith. Uh, you all remember Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says that they had a what? a different spirit, a very unique spirit that was far different than everybody else. God took those two men, Joshua and Caleb, he raises up another generation, and he brings them in to uh, the place of fulfillment. Verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it um, uh, to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. We've been talking first two Sundays. We've been talking about obedience. We've been talking about obedience because obedience is the premise. It is, it is one of the premise of God's fulfillment in our particular life. 
And the Bible says that let this book of the law shall not pass from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according uh, to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have what? Good success. That's what we're coining this. We're coining this uh, uh, Joshua's success journey. The journey of success. God wants all of us to be successful. And there's recipes, there's nuggets in here that we can apply to our everyday life. We can apply to every journey that we're in right now. Our journey of faith, uh, of spirituality, our journey in marriage tonight. I'm telling you tonight, this book can, can make every facet of our life successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. All right. So what I want to do tonight is I want to start exegeting the text. I want to go to verse number one tonight. Again, I want to go to, to, to um, uh, verse number one. Amen? Amen. So I want you to think while we're doing this Bible study. Um, I want you to think about um, your life. I'm going to think about some of the struggles, some of the challenges. Um, um, God is not finished with you yet. Um, there's, there's promises that God has made, and, and it may not be even evident to us right now because maybe we don't have that revelation. Um, but, but if you're a child of God, uh, there are many promises that you have not attained yet. Uh, you will attain them. Uh, you will be successful. Uh, God has an incentive to make sure that he gives us everything that we need uh, to live a life of success. Uh, that when people look at our life and they see success, it talks about the God that we serve. It magnifies the God that we serve. So God wants us to be successful, not just in one facet of life, not just coming to church. That's good. That has great relevance. Uh, he wants us successful in every walk of life. So when people see us, he wants you successful in your finances. He wants you successful in your health. When, when people see you and they see the success of God on your particular life, uh, it magnifies God. It gives God's glory. It, 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 it makes God appealing. He, his appeal goes to level 10 because they see the rating of success on, on our particular life. Verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, y'all remember Moses? He, he, he um, uh, unfortunately, he, he could not, he was not, he could not experience the fulfillment. Um, he, he disobeyed God. Uh, God told him to, um, um, to uh, speak to the mountain, speak to the rock, bring water out. He, smit the, uh, he hit the rock because he was angry. He got emotional. Uh, and God did not allow him, out of all the things that he did for Israel, bringing them through 40 years, God did not allow him to experience the fulfillment. That is a very tragic thing, to go through so many things in life and not get to a point where you're able to come to the fulfillment. When, when you yet know that God has promises for you, uh, um, that's just not enough to know that. But you want, you want to experience the fulfillment of what God has for you. So, so God allowed Moses to, 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 took him to the mountaintop, allowed him to see. position that Moses was in he gets a promotion so after the death of Moses and I want to speak to this tonight for a minute uh, the servant of the Lord that it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun Moses assistant God speaks to 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 Joshua and and um, and tells him in verse 2 that that Moses my servant is dead um, I want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about the fact that, that after death, there's always, when you see death in the Bible, and then when we experience death, when you see the death of Jesus, always, it's always a transitional moment. 
when things dies out, it's always a transitional moment. So you always got to be sometimes careful even when, when people die out in our life, a relationship dies out, or different things, career dies out. Normally when you see death, normally when you see things end, there's a, there's a transitional point. And so you got to be very careful uh, not to get so consumed in emotions and get tied to things that die out in your life. You got to be very conscious of the fact that there's a transition of some sort that is happening. And that's what he's trying to tell, tell, tell um, Joshua. Uh, Joshua was in grief. He was, he was bereaving. He was in grief. He was, he, was, he, was, he was sad because Moses, his leader, has died. And, 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 but God wants her to know you can't stay right here. There, there's a transition that has already happened. And whether you see it or not in your life, the transition always happens spiritually before it manifests out into the natural. Uh, it always, it is always a transition. It may have not played out in the natural yet, but you've got to keep moving. You've got to stay encouraged. You've got to know. I like what the old people always say. They say, you know, be careful when normally when, 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 when somebody dies, a, 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 a older person would say somebody is pregnant. That's what they say. And that, that's normally the truth. They start checking the family. They start seeing who's, who's pregnant. And a lot of times, uh, somebody, somebody is pregnant. So, so, so always remember, any time you experience the death of something, a career, a marriage, a relationship, or uh, the death, a little death of somebody that you love, there's always a transition that has happened. There's always a transitional moment. You need to, you need to be very alert. You need to very, be very in tune with God so God can give you revelation of what's going on. And Moses has died. God's telling Joshua, he's dead. You know, pretty much you've got to keep moving. You've got a lot of people. You've got a lot of people that's counting on you. you you've, got, you've got a whole nation, Israel. You've got 12 tribes that you've got to lead now. And, you know, sometimes you don't, you, 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 you don't know how much is in you that God has prepared until you get to that point where you've got to walk it out. Amen. So don't don't never get fearful a moment. This is Joshua's moment. <laughs> don't never you you be very surprised. You just you know what Joshua is just going through day by day the challenges of going through forty years of the wilderness. That's what he was doing, and 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 it was hard on him just like it was the rest of the nation of Israel. He did not know those forty years that God was preparing him. He did not know that he would be called upon to 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 raise up to lead a a. A, a whole entire nation. So you don't know what, whatever you're going through, you don't know what God is preparing in you. And when the moment comes, we don't fret the moment. We don't, we don't, we don't get faint hearted because of the moment. We don't get fearful. And this is what God is talking to Joshua about because God has prepared us. So that's why we even praise God when we're going through things. That's why we still remain grateful to God when we're going through things. And sometimes you don't know what has been prepared, what has been strengthened in you. You don't even know until you get to a place where God is going to start using and leveraging your situation that's in you. And you don't know what's in you. You just got to be ready to say, yes, I, I, I'll do what you called me to do. Amen. Amen. So he was prepared. God says, you are the man. You got, you got leadership. You, you are the, the, the lead now. You, you're no longer number two. You're no longer, you're no, no longer the second in charge. You are the you are, you are the head of this movement. And your journey, your journey is going to be more difficult than Moses' journey. What I'm calling you to is going to be more difficult. Even though you don't think you're the leader Moses was, you are. And so, so, so always remember this. Death symbolizes transition. You write that down. Death symbolizes transition transition anytime things die doesn't matter if it's literal whatever it is anytime when people leave your life and and you feel bad about it you feel something is it's always a transitional moment so anytime you see death is transition when jesus died on the cross what happened it transitioned us into a new covenant Anytime you see death, there's always a transition that has taken place. You may not even know it. It's because it's in the spiritual. And that's why you have, to, you, have to, you have to get alert. 
You have to, you got to get in tune with God. You've got to see what and hear what God is saying. But never, never, never get so caught up in being distracted in the moment or either being getting caught up in your emotions about what has died because normally something greater in transition has happened. That's a word for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Don't never get caught up when some when things die. Let it die. You've done all you can do with it. You've done the best you can do. May have not may, may have not made all the best decisions. Let it die. There's a transition that has happened. You got to keep moving. You got to be keep moving, and you got to be open to what God is going to release in your life. You got to be open to what God is going to reveal. There's always a transitional moment. Amen. So God is transitioning. I mean, this is what he says. He said, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. The son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. We now therefore arise, go over to Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I'm giving to them the children of Israel. He has already transitioned them. Even though they had not gotten into the land yet, they still got to cross over the Jordan and then they're into the land. But they're right there at the banks of the Jordan about to cross the Jordan so they can go into the land. But God's pretty much going to tell them in a minute, I've already, the land is already yours. You, your transition has already happened. So, so you're in a pivotal moment. What you going to do? You gonna sit? Are you gonna sit here and be depressed? Get all caught up? Be distracted because Moses gone. Moses is taken care of. Uh, but you, you, you got a journey you got to run now. You got a race that you still have to go. And there's people that's counting on you. There's people that they are counting on you uh, to be successful. Amen. I always know that success. Success is not only for you, it's about everybody connected to you. It's just not for you. It's about those that are connected to you. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now arise, therefore arise. This, this word arise, I want to I speak this for a moment. Arise here means to emerge. It means to spring up from your present situation. It means to emerge from it. It means to, to emerge. He's telling, spiritually, he's telling Joshua, you, you go, yes, he's talking about in, 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 in the natural arise, but it has a spiritual connotation. You have to emerge now. You're going to have to emerge to a different place. You're going to have to go to a different level. You're going to have to emerge into a, a, a whole different type of person if you want the fulfillment. And you want the people of God to get the fulfillment. So arise means to emerge. It means to spring up from your present situation. Whatever your situation is, if you want the fulfillment, all of us believing in God for great things this year, aren't we? We have to emerge. It, 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 we, we've, we've, been, we've been at a certain place for too long. And that place is not going to get us the fulfillment. We've got to emerge. I made a I made a I made a declaration uh, last week. Um, one thing about pastoring, you preach you preach a lot, and you preach a lot means you got to have a lot of messages. I've never ever preached the same sermon twice. Never. It's always a different message. It's always a different message. Um, and it's consuming. It takes a lot out of you. Looking, seeking God's face. You just, you just laid the word down this Sunday. There's a whole new word God has for the people uh, next Sunday. Uh, contrary to many, I don't go on the internet to get the sermon. I go through this book and get the sermon. Takes a little bit more to do that. You got to dig down deep with God. Although you've been here since the almost beginning, you've never heard the same message, have you? 
I never, I've never ministered the same message ever, even if I had to do two services. Never ministered at all. I think God always has a fresh word uh, for the people. It takes a lot. It takes a lot um, to, 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 to transact that. Well, one thing that you have, one thing, if you're not careful, you will forsake your own personal devotion because you're, you, you're seeking God for messages for the people. And sometimes those messages are not uh, are more reach what God has given you for you. So, so there's a whole different cut on it uh, because just like you have to grow, I have to grow. Uh, what I give you on Sunday may not be specific for me, although it does blesses me. There's not a message that I've ever ministered that somehow did not add, add value to me, did not help me. Um, but it, the totality of the message was not a devotional type of message where, where I was felt it so much where it took me to a whole different level of intimacy in God. So, so you have to get this message together on a weekly basis and, and you have to get in the face of the Lord Sunday ends by Tuesday uh, Monday uh, I'm already going to God God I need a word for next week for the people I'm not sure what they're dealing with don't know, understand what, 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 what I'm supposed to say don't know what scripture uh, I, I don't know anything I, I need a word and it forces you to to get up early and, and stay in God's face to get the word for the next week. But again, the, you got to have a word now. And so a lot of times you see preachers, they, 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 get, they, they get depleted. And you have to be very careful how you judge preachers because uh, in their weakness, in their humanity, because they're trying to always be there for the people, they're not trying to make excuse or validate anything. Uh, they, they, many times they're on an empty, they're on an empty tank. They're just, they're, they're, they're poured out, but I'm here again this Sunday, here again this Wednesday, tell you what does says Lord, but they're spiritually drained. And when you're drained, you're very vulnerable. You make stupid decisions when you're drained. So you have to kind of be careful how we, we have to pray for the, for, for those who, who, who have this task. Uh, but doesn't validate anything, okay? Doesn't validate anything. It's just the point where it is. So we have to go and get fulfilled. So my mandate and, and declaration of God was uh, that I've got to, to every morning now, uh, I've got to, outside of what I give you, because we're in a whole different season. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a season to emerge. Um, I can't go through this, this, this season just giving you a word and I might be drained, malnourished from a word that I need myself. Um, so I have made a pact that I have to give extra time every week outside of what I give to, to BOL for me so I can be fulfilled at a greater level. Is it making sense to you? Uh, because I understand the season. I understand transitions has already happened. And we've got to be in position to, 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 to experience the fulfillment. And if we're not at a certain place, especially spiritually, we're going to miss the fulfillment when it comes. Does it make sense? So he says arise means to emerge. It means to spring up from the present situation. I want to talk about two things. I, first of all, I said when you're talking about emerge and, and arise, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you tonight, you're dealing, with, you're dealing with different levels of demons that we've never seen. We're dealing with an intensity of the enemy, intensity of people's hearts. People's hearts are, are not where they used to be. We're, we're in a whole different scenario, a whole different situation, and we've got, we've got to rise to the occasion. So the first thing I want to talk about when we talk about emerge or arise, we have to emerge or arise spiritually. When I just gave you that, that, that nugget about me, it was talking about spiritually. We've got to rise. We've got to, we've got to rise. We've got to emerge, do the things spiritually uh, that it takes uh, to grow in our faith, to grow in our knowledge of God, to grow in, 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 uh, where our relationship with God goes 
goes to an extremely different level. Uh, we can't go through this year. We can't go through this season. This season will not end this year. It will continue on for a while. You will not be able to go through this looking for something greater in fulfillment still at the same place. You're, we're going to have to emerge spiritually. Whatever that means for you, it, it means something different for everybody. It means something different for everybody. It may mean to somebody they got to get more in God's word. If for somebody it means it may be getting God's word and fasting more. Uh, for some of us it means we have to maybe now deprive ourselves of things, some things such as, such as things that have kept us distracted from a people standpoint, from a social media standpoint. Uh, I love the news. That's just me. Uh, I cut off, I cut off uh, Comcast today. That's $300. We cut off our budget. And I forgot we cut it off. And I went home. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot we cut it off. And I went home and looking for the news. And I said, God, God Almighty. I said, was Patience on here today? I, it was on the Cartoon Network. I said, I know she ain't come on with it. It was on the cartoons on, on um, um, the, um, what they call that thing? Um, Fire State. And I said, and man, I, I almost called her folk back. I said, I need, I need Comcast back. I need to see my news. And, 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 but, but, but you can watch too much news. You could, you could watch, you could do too much of different things. It, it'll keep you, uh, it, 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 you know, I like, you know, Proto, you like that, I believe. You know, you can spend an hour and a half in the evening time at nighttime before you go to bed. And that's a very important time uh, that we could be in the word of God. Before we go to sleep, to put 30 minutes in you before you go to sleep. You'll be surprised uh, how, how your attitude will change, you know, because people got bad attitudes in the morning. You'll be very surprised how your attitude, that word in you 30 minutes. Yeah, it, 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 it'll make, I'm just, you know, I leave people long in the morning. I don't know about y'all. I just leave people long in the morning. I don't care who they are, leave them alone. Give them time to adjust. Give them time. Give them time. Okay, they, get, they didn't have dreams last night. They wake up automatically with, with, with an attitude. They, 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 their mind automatically go to somebody who didn't do something right in their life. I mean, it just, it just, they go straight there. Before they even brush their teeth, before they get out of the bed, their mind just goes straight there. You know, it's easy now because you got these cell phones. I mean, you just wake up texting. You know, you just wake up so... So you'll be surprised, but we have to do the things necessary because it's not just what we're putting in us, but it's, it's what we are abstaining from us. Okay, so when you're talking about growing spiritually, it's two different ways. What we put in us, but also what we have to abstain, abstain from us. Both of those two things that uh, Paul talks about, we have to abstain from what? Fleshly lust. Things that cause the, the lust and the flesh and the different things. So we have to abstain. So we have to, we have to put in us, but also we have to abstain from us. Okay, spirit. And I want you, to, I want you tonight, uh, over the next week, you pray on what you need to do spiritually. Because we've got to emerge. Not just you, me as well. We have to emerge to a different level. Uh, one thing I do know, I'm included in this, that we all have to go to a whole different level of anointing which means we got to go deeper in God. We got to go deeper into God. Okay? Um, so spiritually we have to emerge, but in mindset, our mindset has to emerge. He tells Josh, I don't want to focus on it right now, but he tells him through here, you see all the way through Josh, he talks about, he says, be courageous. You have to understand your mindset has to be one that you are a victor, that you can achieve some things. That you have to have courage now. Joshua didn't have this mindset. God had to remind him over and over in the journey that, that be courageous. Be strong. Turn, turn your mindset on to know that you are a strong person. You are a strong man. You are a strong woman. That you are not defeated. That, that you've got the victory. You, you have to know that. You have, you have to know Tonight, in your mind, you have to switch your mind from a victim mentality. You got to switch your mind. You got to uh, 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 change your mindset from 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 just like you know. One thing that qualified Joshua and Caleb 
to come into the promised land is they had a victory mindset. You remember they went into, um, um, what was that? Um, grasshoppers. Was that Jericho? Oh, Lord. Y'all better help me because this is a very, this is a basic Bible story, okay? I, I already lost my thought. You surely supposed to be helping me right now. Okay, oh, thank you, boy. Y'all just looking at me. When, when, when they went out there to spy out the land, 12 spies. Remember that? Was it Jericho? I think it was Jericho. <laughs> Lord, we, we, we might all, we, all of us might need to go. I think it was Jericho with 12 spies. And, and 10 spies, they had two reports. Y'all remember that? 10 spies had a report saying we're already defeated. They said we're going to get whipped. They said them, them, them soldiers are biggest, those soldiers are biggest grasshoppers. You remember that? But Joshua and Caleb said what they say, we can take it. They seen the same thing, but they said what? We could go and take the land. And they didn't focus on the giants in the land, but they said we are as grasshoppers. They are giants. We are as grasshoppers. And, and yeah, and, 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 and Joshua and Caleb seen the same thing, but you know what they seen? They seen them right through them guys. And they, they looked at the fruit, the figs, and said, these things are big. The, the figs were big as uh, uh, watermelons. They, they were big, and so it's your mindset. One thing we got to change is our mindset. We got to merge in our mindset. You can't think, you can't think, you, you can't let past experiences skew your mindset to hold you back from doing what God is calling you to do. You can't let past experience, you can't let failures, you can't let bad decisions, you can't let things keep your mind from being set where it's supposed to be for the manifestation of God's promise to happen in your life. You remember Gideon? Great man, God had to keep telling him, you're a man of valor. He was out there hiding in the threshing floor. He says, you're a man of valor, you're a man of valor. This whole Bible seeks to change our mindset about who we are. Tell us about stuff like you to hear it and not to tell. You're fearfully, you're wonderfully made. Uh, uh, you more than a conqueror. These are mindset nuggets that are all through the Bible that you have to adopt for you tonight. Doesn't matter where you're at in life. You have to adopt this mindset. That's why the Bible says what? Let this mind be what? In you that was also in Christ Jesus. Everything is about the mindset. You have to have a mindset of what we're going to do this year. Uh, and it'll drive your excitement. I can. We, we can take the land. Um, I had somebody, they may be listening tonight. They're not here tonight. They may be listening. Um, um, they came to, to one of the last Bible studies we had in 2023, and we, we, challenged, we challenged you all and said, um, um, this is the year God's going to do greater things. you got to believe it. you got to change your mindset. We start talking about if you're renting, you really need to put your mindset to buying a new house. you got to put your mindset there. you got to put your mindset, I'm not, a rent, I'm, I'm not a renter, I'm an owner. Okay, faith is connected to that. And uh, she texted me two days ago and said it, 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 it sold something in her mind. And what she did, she had a big debt that was on her credit. And that was keeping her from, from really going after uh, a, a house. She had a big debt. That little, one little small declaration that was given at the end of the year put her into a place of a position that she had courage. She texted me two days ago and said, well, she called a creditor. And the creditor wrote the debt down like 80%, 90%, and she was able to pay it off easy. Now she's in a position to do what she needed to do to buy the house. Says so it's your mindset. See, things overwhelm you and, and you get defeated in those things and, 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 and it'll paralyze you. You got to say, no, I can't. I can't go do that. I can't be the first one to finish college. I can't be, I can't make this kind of money. I can't, I can't. I like to challenge people. I, I was sitting with a client yesterday 
And uh, they're good people, uh, have a very prestigious position with the city of Atlanta. Uh, and they've been on the news a lot in the city of Atlanta because they, uh, what they do with the city of Atlanta. And uh, they make well over 200 some thousand dollars a year, well into the six figures. And uh, I challenged them. I said, you, 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 you've got this other business and you're working for them, that's great. And, and you're a single, single, single lady, no children, in the early 40s, you're doing well. Driving nice, you, you're living nice, you got rental properties, you got this, that, and the third. I said, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to make three times as much income. I want to challenge you to put time in your own, put, put energy in your own business. Keep doing what you're doing with them. They've already given you a platform. You, you, uh, she's, she's been on, uh, uh, as a news personality. On, you, you all would know if you see her. Uh, now she's with the civil line uh, uh, in a certain position. But I want to challenge you this year to make two to three times more income. But I want you to shift. I want you to put, I want you to put more attention in your business than you're putting on your job. You're making good, but I want to challenge you to go to another level. And, 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 and she looked at me and said, you know what? I've been playing around with that, but I, I just, just couldn't get my mind around it. I said, yeah, you, you, you. And this is what she said. She said, you know, she, she speaks a lot. And she said, just to tell you how I know this is a time to do it, I went and turned the invoice in for a, a speaking engagement I gave. And, and, and I gave him an invoice for $2,500. She said, I went in there. Um, with the invoice to get my, my check, she said, the lady told me, um, it was, um, that, 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 um, um, your check is not ready because I need to talk to you. She said, what do you want to talk about? She said, we're not going to turn this invoice in for you. She says, what you just gave people, we're paying people twenty to $30,000 a speech to get this. Let me redo the invoice for you. Do you understand? Making her, making her understand. Now that nigga was already sold before I had even talked to her. I didn't know that had happened. But I'm just, uh, it, so it's easy for her to connect with that, 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 that if you do 10 to 12 of these a year and be more intentional about it and, and scale up your platform, You'll be making, I'm not trying to diminish what you're doing. And I had to keep telling because I didn't want to think that I was, I was speaking down on where she was. She's making real good. But why not make more? And she's a good steward. She's a faithful tither in the church. Amen, somebody. So you, you got to, your mindset has to change now. Your mindset has to change. Don't, don't take, don't take what people have told you. Don't, don't let your situation smother you. Don't let your situation keep you from rising and emerging into your mind and being who God has called you to be. Because that's what has to happen. It has to emerge in your mindset. So you've heard me say over the last two weeks, I'm going to be challenging you this year. Because I, I know what's in you. My job is to know what's in every member of this church. My job is to know what, to challenge you as far as being the greatest husband, being the greatest wife, being the greatest entrepreneur, to be the greatest this, to be the greatest that. But it starts with your mind. You've got to say, I can have it. Does it make a sense? So we have to emerge. I want you to, I want, touch your mind real quick. Praise the Lord. Oh, God. Uh, say, let my mind match God's promises for me. Let's say it again. Let my mind match God's preordained promises for me. Amen. Your mind has got to do this. So you may have to get you may have to get into some different environments. You may have to look at, you may have to get, get into to, 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 to different environments of, um, uh, so you can start seeing different things. I, I think I told you so, a couple of months, a few months ago, uh, it's okay to have other social media accounts, but get your LinkedIn account. See what these people are doing. They're moving and shaking. These are business people out here. Uh, get around people who are at where you're trying to go. 
If you're around people at your level, you are around the wrong people. I'm not saying we don't still fellowship with them. No, we're not, we're not too good to fellowship with nobody. But I'm telling you, you're going to have to start changing your environment. You got to start believing because people will, people, people life will, 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 has a way to pull you up. You will be inspired. Inspiration can change your mind. Focus on reading some different books. I know about the mystery stories. Those are good. The love novels, they're good. <laughs> they help you get you your little lonely space every now and then. Yeah, they all good. But but get you some, <laughs> Deacon Richard, get you some books. Get you some books that's going to challenge your mind. I tell my son that all the time. I say, I want you with books that's going to get you some of these books. And he's done a great job of doing things. But get you some books that just change your mind. Change your mind. Get in a book club, a business book club. Get around business professionals. As a pro if you're a plumber, you should, you should, you should get into a, a high-level plumbing networking group or whatever you can call it or whatever. Get around professionals. They, they have a way, their, their story will have a way of inspiring you. Amen. And it, it'll start changing your mindset. I told and I thank God for this memo. I'm finna keep, I thank God for this memo because she's always accepted what I've said. She said it nice. I'm not going to call who she is, but, but she, 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 she's always accepted it. And it may have been a little hard, but she understood it was done with love. And I've seen great change in her life. And one day, one day we was talking, and, um, and she's, she's just been elevating, and I'm, I'm very proud of her. But uh, we was talking about a house situation and being in a certain place and you know, qualifying for certain homes and stuff. And I had to look and say, that's a poverty mindset. Make the most money you can make. God will settle the rest. I, 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 I would rather I would rather be in a position of so much financial strength and afford a house than, than anything else. Don't, don't never let your situation determine what you're able to do. Don't you ever do that. You, your job is to maximize your potential. Your job is to, to understand what God what wants you and where he's taking you and you need, to, you need to reset your mindset. But you got to change people. Amen, somebody. You got, you got to change people. You got to change them. You got to change. You got to change. You got to change. You change your environment. Change your vibe. Change what you read. Change what you look at. Change, change what you meditate on. But it starts with saying, I can have what God says I can have. Amen, somebody. Is that all right? Well, that's it for us tonight. God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Give God <guys> a praise. <laughs> I'm trying to give y'all a little less Bible study this year. Praise the Lord. Amen. So y'all could chew on it a little bit more. Amen. Uh, and, and also, if I'd have got into this next point, that's going to take us about 20 more minutes. So, uh, but I am, I am geared toward trying to be more, a little bit more timely, as the Lord wills. Because you come here next week and we go to 8.30, I don't want you coming, rebuking me, saying, now you say it, but let's give God some hand cover praise. So what two areas do we want to emerge in this year? Talk to me. Spiritually in our mind. I want you to take out a Bible, not a Bible, but take your phone, not, not tonight, just some other time. Take your phone out. Take your computer out. Go to Google. And I want you to put in there, what does the Bible say about the mind? What does the Bible say? I haven't done this but I'm pretty sure it'll work for you. Uh, what does the Bible say about a person's mind? Now, that's going to give you some stuff in there about what the mind is supposed to be. But I want you to start looking at the things, the scriptures about where, I, where God is provoking our mind to be. If you're watching with us tonight, God bless you. We thank you. Uh, we hope you're at home safe. 
Uh, we got some very strange people here with me tonight. They didn't brave the cold to come out to get the word of God. Uh, but we do thank you for being at home warm, in place. We pray God's blessings on you. Uh, remember, join us. Join us so we can take this journey of success together. We're coming into some great, some great things this year. And I want you to be a part of what we're doing here at BOL. I uh, also want you, if you're so kind and you believe that these words and what we're doing here, if it, if it's, if it is a, a uh, impacts you, if it's a value to you, uh, I want you to partner with us. I want you to partner with us every time that a word goes forth that agrees with your spirit. Uh, it may not even agree with your spirit sometime. It may, it may tinge with the flesh. I want you to sow. I want you to partner with us. I want you to start putting a seed uh, to your promises, a seed to your faith. I want you to start sowing. Uh, and then some of y'all have just been faithful titles uh, through, through the virtual platform. I thank you uh, for all that you do as well. Um, eternal Lord, I God, I thank you for each one of them that's watching today. Uh, bless them, oh God. We thank, thank you for them uh, just believing in the word that goes forth here. Uh, there's one that's not saved today that's watching. I pray. Uh, we pray your blessings upon them tonight. Uh, we pray they're not saved that they may be saved. Uh, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. That they repent of their sins and accept Jesus Christ their Lord. We thank you in Jesus.